Hey y'all, I just wanted to make a quick video. Uh, there's a lot of questions about what, what does this additional allotment of workers uh, actually mean? How does it work? So 35,000 additional workers uh, were announced this past Thursday, March 31st. As of the filming of this video, DHS has not announced a final rule. A final rule is so what's actually going to come out as the official announcement of Department of Homeland Security. That's not just going to tell us how many workers are going to be allowed, but when we can file, how we can file, what the procedures are going to be like, what the start dates can be, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know the final details, but I can tell you this. Based on what we've seen in the past, as recently as when we had this announcement of additional workers for the October cycle, which was announced in December 2021, this is probably how it's going to work. And this is probably uh, what it means for you. So first of all, there's a basic division in those 35,000 workers, 23,500 of those workers uh, slots are reserved for returning workers. A returning worker is somebody that has a certification in the past three years. So past three years means what? 2021, 2020, 2019. If you know folks who have an H2B certification from those years, whether they're abroad or in the United States, they are eligible to become part of your worker pool. Now, who's going to know who those people are? Well, if you're a recruitment company, you better be asking that as a matter of course, you know, do you have H2B certification? Those are the people that you're gonna to wanna to identify to bring into your candidate pool. If you're abroad, you're working abroad, you're recruiting folks abroad, this is again, uh, something that you're gonna to wanna to identify. For employers, practically speaking, it's gonna be really difficult, if not impossible, for you to find people with prior certification. They're certainly probably not going to apply through the Department of Labor portal, even though I know that everyone gets tons, 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 tons of mail uh, from potential recruits through that Department of Labor portal once they start their recruitment uh, in the certification process. So you need to be looking out for recruiters. And I can tell you that the demand this year for returning workers to be used towards that additional cap is higher than any other year because this announcement comes fully almost two months ahead of any other announcement previously in the history of this program, which means that there's a lot more demand since workers um, are still needed by the employers um, that had applied for an April 1 start date. Usually when this announcement comes in, let's say June, a lot of employers don't need the workers they applied for anymore. So in this case, they do. There's gonna be huge demand. So you need to start calling recruiters, recruiting agencies now. Okay, so that's that's the returning worker side. But then you have these 11,500 uh, slots available for new workers, but only from four countries, which again are gonna be up here on the screen. And what's gonna happen with those is, um, there's going to be a date in that final rule that has not yet been issued. And it's going to say, if, probably going to say, because this would happen in the past, but if not, it'll be implicit, which is if by XYZ date, which will probably be some date in July or August, some of those 11,500 workers have not been requested from these four countries, again, the countries here, then they can be rolled over to other countries, given to other countries. What that means is that if you need and can only get new workers, or if you have a particular person slated in a particular country that's not in those four countries, you are going to have a chance, a small chance, that maybe you can get those workers starting in August. You'll have to start the process for them in August, although they'll only be here for a shortened season unless you're on something like a one-time category. So I, I wouldn't put any bets on getting those workers if you need new workers and they're not from these four countries. Okay, so that's how it works. So people ask, well, does that mean if you know, I have uh, workers I need to get from Mexico who are new workers, not returning workers that I can't get them through this additional allotment. Yes, it means you cannot get them through the additional allotment. Then there's this weird set of circumstances where uh, because certain consulates um, are working, basically, I mean, all consulates around the world right now are working with skeleton staff who are working from home, things are slow. So what's happening is that a lot of petitions that are you know, being slated for one country are actually getting processed in consulates abroad. Uh, sometimes this is interpreted as, as meaning that those consulates abroad are then using a, uh, let's say, petition that's meant for, let's say, Haiti to, let's say, South Africa gets that petition to process because Haiti just doesn't have the processing capability. They don't have enough workers. They don't have enough staff. Well, some people are like, well, does that mean that South Africa then gets to send their workers on the Haiti petition? That should not happen. 
I can't guarantee that's not been happening. I don't, uh, you know, I hear rumors all the time, but that shouldn't happen and it's certainly not what uh, is supposed to happen under the program. So I wouldn't stick your hopes on, you know, getting foreign country petitions from one consulate into another, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's it. That's the whole thing. Um, oh, I do get one more set of questions, uh, which is people from countries that are not part of the H2B program um, are asking, well, does this mean that I can come in now with these additional visas? Folks, uh, only workers uh, from the H2B countries um, are go, uh, you know, can typically, typically come in. Otherwise, there needs to be some sort of waiver uh, filed with the I-129 petition, okay? Those waivers are completely discretionary by USCIS. And if there is an allotment of additional visas that's, let's say, transferred from these four countries, okay, um, to additional countries, you're probably gonna run out of time to file those waivers. So I would say that the answer on that too is, is probably not. Okay, um, if you're not on the H2B country list, the fact that you'll only be possibly getting visas in late summer and then have to file for a waiver on top of it probably means that you're not gonna be coming in on time if at all. Okay, unfortunately, it's just the reality of the program. So that's my quick update. Uh, I got that question a lot in the previous video. Thank you so much and uh, everybody have a good work day. All right, bye.